Welcome back guys. In this lesson, we're going to look at combining what we've looked at so far, the six string, five string and four string chords and prep ourselves for the little track that I've written for the last lesson of this unit. So grab your guitar and let's get cracking. If you just joined us, please remember that you can get the backing tracks, the tabs and the write-up all for free on our website. The link is in the description below. Also, please remember to like and subscribe and we'd love to hear from you how you're getting on. If you have any questions, remember we always respond to all the questions in the YouTube comments. So we're going to look at a quick recap of what we looked at so far and then I'll show you the chord progression that we're going to do to combine them all and then our practice through all of those. So the recap was on a six string chord, we're going thumb, thumb, thumb on the E, A and D strings, and then first finger, second, third on the G, B and E. And then when we're going backwards, third, second, first, 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 and then thumb on the low E strings. So that's our six string chords. And then that idea is the same with our five string chords, just with one less string in there. So. Let's take an A minor for instance, this is going to be thumb, thumb, first, second, third, and then backwards, third, second, first, first, thumb. And the same for a C. And then for the four string chord, we don't need to do any of the double notes, so it's just thumb, first, second, third, and then backwards. Okay, so the chord progression for the track that I've written is E minor, G, A minor, C, and D. So we're going to have to combine our right hand technique of pushing through different strings and get that flowing fluidly to match the correct chord and the correct number of strings per that chord. So with the E minor and the G, and I've grouped them together, so it's E minor and G, which is the six strings, A minor and C, which are the five strings, and then the D on its own. So with the E minor, thumb, 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 first, second, third then backwards, second, first, 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 thumb, and then the same thing for G minor, thumb, 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 second, first, oh sorry, first, second, third, and then backwards, second, first, 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 thumb, and the same thing here, we're not going to hit the high note again, we're going to try and practice turning on that high note, so let's run these two together just quickly. then we're going to jump into the A minor. So we'll look at the G major to the A minor chord change. So we'll start with our G, just what we did. Now when we change to the A, our thumb is going to reposition over this A string and we're going to repeat the process like we did a couple of lessons ago. So thumb, thumb, first, second, third. Remember that our First is always on the G, so you push the thumb up until that G string when you reach there and then you're into the fingers. And then the way backwards, your first starts on the G and we pull it all the way back until we hit the low string. So the low string is the one that's gonna change between each chord. So the low string on the E and the G is this E string. So the thumb's always starting here. The low string on the A minor and the C, or the A major as well, is this A string. So, so we're always, when we're descending, pushing our finger until we hit this A string. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So let's take a G major. And again, we're gonna isolate the difficulty or isolate the new thing that we're practicing. So we're gonna go into G major and we're going to descend. So that means we're gonna start on the high E string, go backwards. And then when we get to the bottom, we'll change to the A. And this time we will hit this low E string just to kind of get used to it first. And then into the A. And then 
backwards into the G again. Okay, so if we were to do this now, like we're going to try to do, where we don't hit the low string again, it's going to sound like this. Actually there, I played my thumb on the A string, so that's when we can quite easily kind of trip over the fingers that we're using. So we'll try it again. natural to fall into using the thumb on the A string and it's something that's going to be a little bit tricky but I mentioned before being a little bit more fluid so this is not set in stone this fingering and you might find that you find a particular way to do it like you might use like doing the thumb and then the thumb again on the A string for instance any way that works really I'm just showing you the way that I like to do it so going backwards from the top of the G, getting the first finger, and then hitting the thumb on the root note of this A. So that's the idea whenever we're changing between the G and the A chord. So the other chord change, which changes the shape is C to D. So same thing on the C, we're gonna start with a thumb on the A string. going to play the A string again. We're going to do our first finger on the D string and then jump in with our thumb on this low string of the D. looking at that descending from the C and then into the thumb on the D descending the D so the core of the idea is that the first finger comes back to the string just before the low note or the root note of each chord and then we jump in with the thumb to the root note of the following chord typically that's the way it's going to happen again fluidity is required some certain songs or certain finger style patterns are going to require a different approach based on whatever the song demands so don't feel like this is the only way to do it just this is the way that generally i'm going to show you to do it so then the last chord change which changes the number of strings we're using is D major back to the E minor. So we'll start with the D and then we just jump all the way down. This is a fairly simple one because there's that gap in between. Just jump back into the thumb on the E string when we're hitting the C minor. same techniques that we talked about before. Now E minor to D is an interesting one. We haven't actually looked, that's not in this chord progression, but we will look at that anyway. Again, just to give you the tools to understand how this approach is going to be. So E minor to D, we'll go up E minor, then backwards, and then just jump in our thumb over to the D string for this D major chord. So it's the exact same approach again. First finger is going to come all the way back to the string just before the root note. And then the thumb jumps to the root note of the string or the root note of the chord, whatever that chord is on the corresponding string. So that's the approach to take with all of this stuff. The general, that's the way that's going to be the easiest, I think, to apply this technique in a consistent manner. Right. 
So the chords again were E minor, G, A minor, C, and D. So let's try putting those together back to back and then we'll apply, apply a drum beat to it. Okay, so we'll jump in with this E minor first. Same approach as before, all the way down to the A string, and now we'll change to the G major, thumb on the A string, and all the way back. Same thing, first finger is gonna come all the way down to the note just before the root note, then we'll change to the A minor. And these two chords have a root note in the same string, so we don't need to do anything. Now with the C and the D, just like as we looked at before, first finger again comes down to the D string, and then our thumb jumps in on the D string for this D major chord. So if we run all that together, So try and practice that slowly, making sure you understand exactly which fingers I'm using at the right time. Rewind this if you need to, to get another look at that. I'm trying to focus on my right hand there, because we know what our left hand's doing. We're just doing these chord shapes as, as normal. And then when you feel like you've got that and you're understanding it, again, that slow progression to learning, when you feel like you're ready, we're gonna jump into playing that with a drum beat now. So we'll start at 80 and we're not going to do them uh, for a set number of beats at the minute. We're just going to go all the way up and then all the way back on each chord before we jump into the next one. Okay, one, two, three, four. Very easy to get lost with this type of thing. Let's rewind that, we'll go back to the E minor. Okay, and important thing to note there on the D, because I know what chord I'm going to next, instead of hitting the thumb on that root note again when I'm descending, because I know I'm changing chord on that particular beat, I will then change that to my first finger, which allows me the time to get the thumb in the proper place Whereas if I were to do it without changing, I have to jump my thumb. Again, just a small difference. You might prefer just to jump the thumb, but I prefer just to maintain the motion. This way it just feels easy because the thumb is gonna naturally fall on this string whenever I'm kind of pushing back on the, eight, on the first finger anyway. And you can see there that little mistake I made. There's a lot going on here, particularly when you've just started this. So it's very easy to change to the wrong chord 
or not use the right finger or forget which string you're going to change to the next chord on. There's a lot to kind of think about all at once. So you can see, even for I, I've been doing it for years, when you're trying to concentrate, it's very easy to mess up. So just keep it all going, keep practicing until you're starting to understand and feel and internalize where all this stuff is happening. Okay, so we'll try it a bit faster now. We'll try it at 100. Okay. One, two, three, four. So that is a tough one. That is certainly the hardest thing we've looked at so far is the combination of the finger approach on each different chord. So spend a bit of time getting that down before we jump into the next lesson, which is going to be this track that we put together. It's gonna to follow the same chord progression, but with the beat and changing it in specific places. So get cracking, get practicing on that, and I'll see you in the next lesson. I hope you enjoyed that lesson. If you'd like to see the next one, please click here. If you want to start the course from the beginning, please click over here. And remember to like and subscribe, the good old stuff. And if you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. We always respond to all the questions in the YouTube comments.